Welcome to Art Starts Explores, our province of play. Are you ready to get creative with us this week? Let's review our three basic rules that guide us through our exploration and play. Rule one is respect. We want to respect ourselves, anyone we're making with, our tools and making space, and the lands and waterways where we're making. How can you practice respect when you explore, play, and make? Rule two is no expectations. If we're not expecting something to turn out good or bad, we're open to it going in a whole bunch of different ways. And that means that all respectful, creative explorations are great, regardless of what it ends up looking like. Try to do things you've never tried before and ask yourself, what will happen if I... Rule number three is nothing is for keeps. Everything we make together is a test or a draft or creative playtime. We're just trying things out. What can you make or try today and then take apart or recycle? What can we learn by making and not keeping? These are our three rules for when we explore together every week. Okay, what will we explore together this week? Hello, and welcome to Art Starts Explores. My name is Alyssa, A-L-Y-S-S-A, and I am the Gallery and Public Programs Manager at Art Starts in Schools. This month, we're exploring the theme of self-portraits. Now, self-portraits are anything that we make um, that represents who we are. It could be a photograph that we take of ourselves. Um, it could be a drawing that we make of ourselves. It could be a piece of writing um, that we write to represent part of who we are. Anything that we piece together, whether it looks exactly like what we look like in real life or whether it's um, a symbolic or a, um, or a written version of, of, of who we are. Um, it's a way of, of sharing parts of ourselves with other people. So today we're gonna be exploring shadows in self-portraits. So the materials that we're gonna need for this workshop, um, if you're following along with me, you will need some kind of flashlight. And if you don't have a flashlight available, um, you may have a flashlight in um, a smartphone. Um, you can also use um, a, a side lamp, a desk lamp um, in this activity. Anything that's going to sort of flash light in the direction of your artwork today. Uh, the second thing that you'll be needing is a camera. Again, you don't need anything fancy. Um, it can be a phone camera. Um, it can be a camera on your computer, whatever that you have, whatever you have available uh, to you. You'll also be needing some paper. Now, if you've made with us before, uh, you know that we like to use paper from the recycling bin. Um, so if you have paper available to you from the recycling bin, then you can uh, gather that right now. And the last thing that you'll be be needing are some mark making tools. So mark makers are anything that we use to make a mark on a piece of paper. So a coloring pencil is a mark making tool. Um, a Sharpie is a mark making tool. A pen is a mark making tool. Um, a stamp is a mark making tool. Um, anything that's going to add color or contrast on your paper um, is what you're going to be needing. All right, let's get started. So today we're going to be going on a photo walk or a photo roll. 
Um, and we're going to be looking at, at our shadows, at what our shadows describe or show about who we are. Um, we are going to practice playing with shadows, um, seeing how big we can make our shadows, how small, um, if we can make our shadows look different, um, look like different shapes, depending on how we move and manipulate um, the movement of our bodies. But to start us off, we're going to use um, our flashlight, um, or if you're using a desk lamp um, or another form of light, you can, um, you can uh, grab that right now. And with this form of light, we're going to experiment with how we can change the shape of shadows depending on where we put the light. So I'm gonna start with my hand and you're welcome to follow along with me. So when I put the flashlight above my hand, suddenly behind my hand, I can see uh, my fingers being almost projected on the grid mat below me. Now what's really cool is that if I move my flashlight further away, my shadow gets smaller. And if I move my flashlight closer up, then suddenly my shadow gets bigger. And depending on where I place the attention of my flashlight, a different part of my shadow is highlighted or it grows or shrinks. But then what happens when I move my hand in a different way? What happens if I close my fist? When I close my fist, suddenly my knuckles become really apparent in the shadow and they almost look like if I just pay attention to my shadow and not to my hand, it looks like a little dinosaur creature or perhaps um, a mountain range. Maybe it seems like um, a group of waves in the ocean swaying back and forth. So when we just pay attention to our shadows and not necessarily um, the objects or the things or the people um, that are projecting these shadows, different images sort of come up that are really interesting. If I move my hand into a different position, like this, for example, suddenly my shadow looks more like a bunny rabbit or maybe another kind of mythical creature or animal. So depending on how I move my hand into different positions, my shadow takes on new meanings and new positions. Okay, so now I'm going to experiment with um, the shadows that come up through different objects, just to sort of uh, continue thinking about how we can move and manipulate light to change shadows. So I'm gonna start with um, a glass, and you're welcome to start with any object that is close to you. Um, it could be a glass as well. It could be um, something that's in your making space. Um, could be something that is um, on a shelf or somewhere else in your room. We can start with any object that you have access to um, and that you can fit in your maker space. So if I start with my glass, here it gets really interesting because it's a transparent object. And when I move my shadow, when I move my light, the shadow also changes quite a lot. And it almost looks like I'm moving into a pool, perhaps flying through space. The images that are cast through the glass change depending on where I put my flashlight. And because the light is going right through this object, there's all kinds of interesting lights that are circling my glass, depending on where I put this light. Even though my object is static, 
it doesn't move. Um, it's very solid and I'm putting it in one place. And the shadow around it actually dances quite a lot and changes and isn't static, it, it moves. So what's happening to your object as you're moving um, your light, your lamp, your flashlight um, around it? What are you noticing about the shadows that are being created as you move this light? Does it, do the shadows look anything like the object um, that you are putting light on? Or do they look like something else? All right, I'm gonna try a second object. And again, I'm going to choose an object that is close to me. Um, and you can, again, choose any object that is close to you that you think maybe has sort of an interesting shape. So I have a roll of hemp thread here. And I like this one because it's not quite as solid as the last one that I just showed you. It's not quite as solid as the glass. Um, it can actually, the object itself moves and changes shape a little bit. But the shadow changes even more. So again, if I put my light close to the object, it gets really big and looks like a very massive knotted mess. When I get further away, the shadow gets smaller. It almost looks like a frizzy little creature. My shadow is very different. Now, if I change the object itself and maybe bring it in like this, again, it looks different depending on what angle I position my light in relationship to the object. So what is happening as you move your light around? What are you noticing about these objects in your space? Are they looking really different from what they look like normally um, when you don't have a light directly above them or moving around them? What changes about the object? What does the shadow have to say about this object? What story is this shadow telling? Okay, so I'm gonna move into one last object here that I have, which is a clothespin. And again, you can choose a similar object um, or you can choose a completely different one that's in your space. Um, and with this object here, this clothespin, I'm again going to practice moving it into different ways. What I really love about this clothespin is that when I look at its shadow, and because in this case it's an object that opens and closes, it really looks like a creature. The shadow behind it seems like an alligator perhaps that's coming out of my out of this grid mat out of the water and maybe swimming across my page here if i were just to look at the shadow and not at the object of the clothespin i don't think that i would guess that what that shadow is representing is a clothespin because the shadow doesn't really look like a clothespin. It looks like something else. So, oh, and that too, look at that. If I put it in this position, it kind of looks like a little bunny rabbit, maybe. That's popping up behind my hand. So depending on where we place ourselves um, in a light, if we are close to a light, if we are far away from a light, our shadows change. And our shadows follow us everywhere we go. Um, whenever we're moving through different spaces, we bring our shadows with us. So today, what we're gonna be doing um, is we're gonna be going on a photo walk or stroll 
Um, and you can do this activity um, with a member of your family, with a friend, with a caretaker, um, with a grandparent, um, with your classroom. And when you go um, on this walk or roll um, with, your, uh, with your partner, with your companion, um, what I want you to do is you're going to be taking self-portraits um, and pictures of you as you move around. And you can take turns taking pictures um, of yourself or taking pictures of um, your walking companion. Um, but instead of just taking a normal photo of you, of yourself in a space, I want you to take a photo of your shadow. So as you photograph your shadow, think about um, how you can change the shape of your shadow by moving your body into different positions as you move through space. For example, we have just noticed here uh, that when our hands are really close to a light, our shadows appear to be bigger. Uh, when we move our hands away from light, our shadows are much smaller. So as you take pictures of yourself, think about how you can change the size of your shadow to be really big or really small um, depending on how close or far you are from light. And the other thing that you can play with is following your shadow around. So for example, uh, in this scenario, I am looking at my hand and my shadow is beneath it, but my shadow is just a little bit further ahead than my hand is. It's moving more towards this direction. So if I were to follow my shadow, I could move in the direction that it's going and see where I end up. So often our shadows follow us around, but how can we try and follow our shadows today instead? So I want you to experiment with a few different positions um, and pictures and have some fun. Um, you can take pictures of yourself twirling around uh, you could take a picture of yourself um, trying to make yourself as small as you possibly can be um, or as large as you possibly can move your body into um, and see how the pictures of your shadow change as you move. So I encourage you to pause the video um, at this point and I'm going to go on a photo walk um, with a walking companion um, and I'm going to take some pictures of my shadow and I encourage you to do the same. And when you're finished with your photo walk, I want you to come back um, to this video and to press play once again. And we'll look at our pictures together and um, see um, what we can make from the pictures of our shadows. All right, see you soon. Welcome back from your photo adventure. Um, I hope that you got lots of interesting pictures, uh, self-portraits of your shadows. What was that like for you as you went throughout your neighborhood or throughout your home um, or the place where you are right now? Did you find yourself following your shadow in interesting directions? Did your shadow move and change shapes um, as you change the movements of your body? Did you find your shadow crawling underneath things or um, showing up on walls or spaces where maybe you weren't actually positioned but where your shadow wanted to go? Where did you go? What did you learn from your shadow? All right. Let's look at the pictures um, that we took um, on our photo journeys. I took lots of different pictures, but I'm just gonna show a few of the ones um, that I thought were kind of interesting from my adventure. So this first picture is, was I think one of my favorites from my walk um, because I was at a point where all of a sudden I realized that my shadow actually split into two. 
my shadow was both going, moving towards the left and towards the right. And I thought this was very interesting because although I'm only one person, my shadow was t projecting two people um, onto the concrete below me because of how light was coming from different directions. Did you have anything similar happen to you as you were moving into different spaces? Did your shadow ever show up twice? All right, the second picture um, is of my shadow sort of creeping behind um, a wall. And you can only see half of my body uh, because light is only being, is only coming from behind me from half of my body, whereas the other half of my body um, is being blocked by um, a building. And so you can only see the light cast from one side. Did you experiment with um, moving behind different objects or in front of them to see um, what parts of your body, what parts of your shadow would show up? This next picture um, is of my shadow holding or touching maybe um, some leaves on a vine that was growing in an alleyway outside of my makerspace. And I thought that this one was kind of fun uh, because even though I personally was not touching uh, these leaves, my shadow was. Did you find that your shadow interacted uh, with any objects or things that you yourself weren't touching, but your shadow was touching? What happened? This next picture that I took is actually of my hair. Um, and I think it's interesting because if you were to just look at this picture and not know what it was a picture of, you probably wouldn't guess that it was of my head and my hair. Um, so I'm actually holding up parts of my hair and it's falling. Um, it was quite windy where I was walking. So there, my hair was kind of moving in different directions. And in this picture, it kind of looks like my hair is a series of vines or of wires or of um, hemp, like we were experimenting with before. It has a very similar effect. Um, did you play with taking pictures of your hair or different parts of your body kind of in isolation? So when I, what I mean by in isolation is when you take a picture of just a part of a whole thing. So instead of taking a picture of your whole body shadow, maybe just your hand or just your foot or just your nose or your hair, what did you focus on? What did you take pictures of? This next picture is kind of interesting because I find that the way that I moved my body made me almost look like I was a frog. My arms, I moved my, I moved my elbows up towards my head. Um, to me, they almost seem like looking at the shadow as if I have three heads or as if I have um, large ears coming out of my, my frame, uh, my legs are bent, similar uh, to, to the way that frogs bend their legs when they're about to jump. Um, and I think that if I were to take this um, picture and turn it into something that I could really make a new creature out of my shadow. I could add uh, legs or spikes or um, different colors to make this shadow, the shape of the shadow into a creature. The last picture that I'm going to show you uh, is one that I'm going to call slug. And I'm going to wait a second to see if looking at this picture, you can figure out what part of this picture is me. So you might have explored different shadows in this picture because there's shadows coming from different parts. But actually the only part of this picture that's me is the little hand in the, in the bottom right corner that's sort of creeping through, creeping its way into the picture. And 
I wanted to position my hand there because when I put it at that point, my shadow made it seem like a little slug was crawling along the floor. Um, so although it's a picture of me, my shadow kind of turned into a different um, creature altogether. It represents maybe something different. What happened in your pictures? What did you like best about, about this exploration? Did you find that how you moved your body and your shadow into different places surprised you, taught you something new um, about your body, about your shadows? Okay, for the last part of this workshop, we're gonna choose one of the pictures that we took. Um, it doesn't have to be your favorite, just choose one that you find the most intriguing or interesting. Maybe there's something in the picture that surprises you when you look at it. Um, so I'm going to choose the picture um, where I mentioned that I am kind of in a frog-like position. And I'm going to take a piece of paper. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to draw uh, the outline of the shadow that I see. And then I'm going to add pieces uh, to the shadow to turn it into something else. So I'm going to bring the self portrait that I took, uh, the picture of my shadow, and I'm going to make a new self portrait now on my piece of paper based on this picture. So choose any picture uh, that you took that you like. So I'm going to add my leg, my elbows, my head, my other elbow, and there's only part of my le other leg in this picture. Okay, so here's my shadow. There are other parts, other shadows in this picture. There's the railing behind me, there's a pillar um, on my right, but I'm just gonna draw for now um, the outline of my shadow of my body. And I'm gonna see what I can add to this picture. So if I imagine this perhaps as a three-headed creature. I could add some color to these faces. What's interesting about your shadow, the picture that you are, are drawing now? What can you do with this picture to change it into something else? So I'm gonna make one head have three eyes and maybe two big front teeth. I'm going to make my second one have sort of triangular eyes and maybe a squiggly mouth. What should I do with my third head here? Maybe I'll experiment with this orange highlighter and maybe this creature won't have eyes. Maybe instead they'll have um, two noses and a square or rectangular mouth. Okay, so I've made here a three-headed creature out of my shadow. And I'm gonna to continue to experiment with this picture. And I encourage you to do the same. And we're gonna just keep drawing and sketching um, for the next little bit together and see what happens as you change the shape of your shadow by adding color with your mark making tools. All right, here we go.
Okay, here is my shadow or my shadow monster. It's become a monster here with my three faces, scaly body and spiky hands. Um, this creature now looks nothing like me, um, but it is based on my shadow, on my self portrait. So here I've turned my self portrait, the picture of my shadow into um, a creature that I don't know, that I've never met before, but that I've created here on my piece of paper. What did your picture turn into? How did your shadow change as you added color, as you added um, parts of your imagination onto your piece of paper? What happened? All right, so as you know, um, in our Art Starts Explorers program, one of the rules that we have um, is that nothing is for keeps. So this piece of paper um, with my shadow, with my self-portrait creation, um, I am not going to keep. But although I'm going to return it to my recycling bin, um, I am going to take with me something that I've learned uh, from this exploration from exploring shadows through self-portraits. So one thing that I really loved um, about exploring my shadow on my photo walk is that I got to pay attention to the world around me through a different perspective. Although my shadow is kind of a part of me, um, it also has it, a mind of its own in that it moves in directions that are different than the, the ways that my body moves. Um, and by paying attention to my shadow rather than to my physical body, um, I got to learn a different perspective, to learn where my shadow moves um, on the ground, on walls, on stairs, um, on the sidewalk and how it interacts with other people's shadows that move around me when I go throughout my neighborhood. So I hope that you enjoyed your photo walk today. I'm going to keep my camera on as I clean up my space and I welcome to clean up, I welcome you to clean up your maker space along with me um, so that you're ready to go next week. Have a wonderful rest of your week.